It can strike without warning at any moment. You may be walking across a soft carpet and reaching for the doorknob when suddenly, zap! To understand static electricity, we first need to know a bit about the nature of matter. All matter is made up of atoms that consist of three types of smaller particles, negatively charged electrons, positively charged protons, and neutral neutrons. Normally, the electrons and protons in an atom balance out, which is why most matter you come across is electrically neutral. But electrons are tiny and almost insignificant in mass, and rubbing or friction can give loosely bound electrons enough energy to leave their atoms and attach to others, migrating between different surfaces. When this happens, the first object is left with more protons than electrons and becomes positively charged, while the one with more electrons accumulates a negative charge. This situation is called a charge imbalance, or net charge separation. But nature tends towards balance. So, when one of these newly charged bodies comes into contact with another material, the mobile electrons will take the first chance they get to go where they're most needed, either jumping off the negatively charged object or jumping onto the positively charged one in an attempt to restore the neutral charge equilibrium. And this quick movement of electrons, called static discharge, is what we recognize as that sudden spark. This process doesn't happen with just any objects. Otherwise, you'd be getting zapped all the time. Conductors like metals and salt water tend to have loosely bound outer electrons, which can easily flow between molecules. On the other hand, Insulators like plastics, rubber, and glass have tightly bound electrons that won't readily jump to other atoms. Static buildup is most likely to occur when one of the materials involved is an insulator. When you walk across a rug, electrons from your body will rub off onto it, while the rug's insulating wool will resist losing its own electrons. Although your body and the rug together are still electrically neutral, there is now a charge polarization between the two. And when you reach to touch the doorknob, zap! The metal doorknob's loosely bound electrons hop to your hand to replace the electrons your body has lost. When it happens in your bedroom, it's a minor nuisance. But in the great outdoors, static electricity can be a terrifying destructive force of nature. In certain conditions, charge separation will occur in clouds. We don't know exactly how this happens, it may have to do with the circulation of water droplets and ice particles within them. Regardless, the charge imbalance is neutralized by being released towards another body, such as a building, the earth, or another cloud in a giant spark that we know as lightning. Bringing the scientific revolution to America, Benjamin Franklin. Innovator, entrepreneur, and America's first storm chaser. Using a child's toy to unlock one of the keys to the future. Since the dawn of mankind, humanity has lived in fear of one of the most destructive forces in nature, lightning. Worldwide, 16 million lightning storms a year kill 24,000 people. Each strike wields the power of a ton of TNT. With a temperature of 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, five times hotter than the sun. As a journalist, Franklin knows the devastation lightning can cause. Grain stores, houses, and churches destroyed. Come and give us a hand. Only 60 years after the Salem witch trials, many still believe it's the wrath of God. But Franklin will challenge this to prove that lightning is a form of electricity. Go crazy out there and help unlock one of the keys to mankind's future i was never before engaged in any study that so totally engrossed my attention and time 
Surely the thunder of heaven is no more supernatural than the rain, hail, or sunshine of heaven. The battle between superstition and science that defines the age. Franklin was very much part of the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment was based on the idea that there are natural explanations for the phenomenon of nature. I think Franklin was finally pounding the nails into the coffin of superstition. This was at a time when lightning was still considered by many people to be God's vengeance. To test his theory, a specially adapted kite with a metal wire at the top and a metal key at the base. Let's go. All right, away you go. Let it go, let it go. An experiment that could unlock the secrets of the skies. Or electrocute. Benjamin Franklin, in search of the secrets of lightning, helping unlock the keys to our electric world. From clouds, static electricity. You will find it streams out plentifully from the key at the approach of your knuckle. The first proof that lightning is electricity. He looked at the world differently. He wanted explanations that were rational and that made sense and couldn't be attributed to, to supernatural forces. Franklin turns his discovery into a practical invention the world's first lightning rod. Its life-saving design, virtually unchanged to this day. From a stream of electrified air, to identifying positive and negative charges, an experiment that helps unlock a new power that will transform our lives. The birth of the electric world. Light bulbs, television, air conditioning, computers. Every aspect of human life transformed. Just a little over 200 years ago, We've gone from that spot where electricity was the great unknown to a time where we can't imagine something as simple as the batteries in our cell phone. This is a relatively short period of time in the history of humanity, and yet look at what it's brought us. Those positive and negative symbols you see on the terminals are because of Franklin's discoveries. Amazing.